Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to, the, welcome to the DIFF new member orientation video. Uh, if you're watching this, you've probably joined DIFF recently and want to know how to take advantage of being here. Or you're exploring becoming a member, too. Fair. This will be on YouTube. You can yeah. find it. <laughs> and we're here to uh, co-host for this video. I'm Kalia, um, identity woman. And uh, this is Juan. Caballero is my name. By Caballero is my handle. Um, and, and we've been making some educational materials and uh, the like for Diff for a few months now. And um, yeah, we'd like to give you a little tour of the website and of the organization. So DIFF was founded in 2018 to support the emergence of an ecosystem of technologies around decentralized identifiers. Um, we're really committed to working across the ecosystem with um, neighboring organizations. Uh, so there's a PDF of, <clears throat> of where we, we, this organization is relative to others that you can also download on our site. Um, but the most, um, the, the closest neighbors include the World Wide Web Consortium Credentials Community Group, um, where we actually have a, a joint working group with them focused on secure data store um, and, and the technologies related to that. And also the Hyperledger um, projects focused on digital identity. And we also have a, a working group in collaboration with that community focused on um, developing the DITCOM protocols. V2, the, the re, refactoring the DITCOMs to be cross community across not just the Hyperledger projects, but anything with a DID. Um, so yeah, and we um, like to think of DIFF as a co-development organization. Uh, we, we sort of um, try to get companies to work together to develop source and standards in the open together. Uh, and we've got, you know, if if the if you're new to the open source space or the open standard space, we've got some stuff on the Diff Medium blog explaining that stuff coming out this week. Um, but the most uh, important thing to know when you're getting involved in this space uh, is how to participate, what your options are, why you should do it. Um, so yeah, I think before we get go through a little tour of what all the terms mean and where all the information is, it might be good to stop for a minute to reflect on why, what you wanna get out of DIFF overall. Right. So one way to think about this, um, the, the collaborative work here is that we're shaping the future. So these, um, no the pressure, <laughs> huh? No pressure. We're just shaping the future. <laughs> we are. It's, and it's a really awesome place to be, to jump in and participate and make a difference. So one way to look at, um, all the different work items that we'll walk through is to think about what your company's products or tools do and which which of these working groups efforts touch on what you're building and sort of particular aspects of what you're building that you might really want to make sure are present in that future and this is the opportunity to get involved with others and collaborate to make sure that things you care about are um, present in and part of those future standards Yeah, once uh, in a few years, all of this stuff will just be standardized. So the earlier you get involved, the more sort of uh, influence you can have on your own future as a company. Um, so we do the, the, the main terminology used to organize um, DIFF is working groups, um, open groups, and work items. Uh, and I'm, we're gonna walk you through some of those. So here on the groups, you'll see the main sort of standing long-term groups. 
identifier and discovery, sort of for the identifier layer uh, and discovery of identifiers. Um, storage and compute uh, sort of uh, is in hibernation at the moment, um, but there are still a lot of ongoing projects about uh, cloud topography, confidential computing, that, that sort of stuff happening in other groups at the moment. Um, did authentication where um, authentication, authorization, uh, identity tokens, federation issues, um, and the claims and credentials group, um, where there's a lot of uh, work around verifiable credentials uh, and how to uh, handle other people's verifiable credentials, sort of uh, credential interoperability work mostly happens here. And the did. DIDCOM, as we call it, for DID Communications, is a jointly chaired working group with the Hyperledger Ares community. Um, so the DID communication protocol was something that was first made within Ares to communicate between Ares uh, programs, wallets, agents, uh, and it is being generalized for a more cross-community usage uh, with some participants uh, actively contributing from the group from outside the Aries universe. Um, so each of these working groups has a page on the site, which is a handy reference to see the charter, any addenda made to the charter um, to join the mailing list and to see the repos, the repositories on GitHub. Uh, also, the these pages are generally updated pretty quickly if there's a change of chairship or editorship. So uh, it's it's these are an, an authoritative an authoritative place for all the major information for each working group, um, and it, which reminds me that Kalia might want to speak in particular about the Secure Data Storage Working Group. Sure, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Secure Data Storage <laughs> Working Group, and we're working on supporting the um, standardization of what, at least today, is called encrypted data vaults, um, and also a complementary um, imagining of tools called identity hubs. But probably in the next you know, two weeks, the name will change. So stay alert for what we end up calling our specifications, but it's a great example will change. of cross community collaboration and, and bringing um, work together to support par parallel efforts actually syncing up and working in together instead of separately. Great. And we'll, um, we'll return to the question of what it means to join a working group at the end. Uh, but I wanted to mention that also listed on the authoritative uh, information source for each working group is a list of work items and projects within that group. So a lot of groups will concurrently be working on three or four or five um, projects that will have a sort of subset of the members of the group working week after week to advance specifications or code bases or even non-normative things like like collections of representative collections from the wild of credentials maybe verifiable credentials maybe not like the credential manifest so um, uh, the the various work items of each group can be seen here so um, to work on a work item you have to be a member of the group but um, you might not regularly attend the working group wide meetings. You might just be really focused on one item. Um, and each of these work items has their own um, space in GitHub as well. And there are also non IPR protected groups or open groups um, that do have a sort of lower barrier for entry in terms of um, membership and um, where non-patent non relevant things, deliverables are produced and people don't have to waive patents to participate. So one of those um, is the, uh, some of these are geographical, like the a uh, APAC ASEAN group um, for the Eastern Hemisphere. <laughs> um, and 
And soon we're going to have a Diff um, Africa call as well to support folks in that region getting connected and and um, potentially working together on items relevant to the continent. I, I suppose it might be my duty after that to make a Diff America Latina. Suppose <laughs> suppose that will happen in time. Um, there's also a product managers group where people from the business side of the businesses uh, are discussing UX and design issues and productization issues. There's also um, some special interest groups starting up now that um, aren't on the website, but are, do have um, pages here on, on the mailing list in groups.io. Um, and uh, there are currently healthcare and uh, financial and banking technology discussion groups where people are talking about use cases and market building. Um, again, non-IPR protected, non-members welcome. So um, there are, um, yeah, there, there are groups here on uh, lists.identity.foundation. Uh, where you can sign up for mailing uh, mailers. And um, there's probably one special case working group worth mentioning, which is the um, glossary project. Do you have anything to say about that, Kalia? <laughs> Yeah, so at IAW, the Internet Identity Workshop, um, an event many folks from the community attend, um, we um, in, in IAW 29, a group emerged to focus on um, supporting convergence around key terms in the marketplace, which is different than key terms in all the specifications. So each, each working group will define the terms it's using inside the specifications and that works going swimmingly well, um, but there was some confusion at the market level. So our group was spun up and we did work on defining agents, wallets and hubs no, agents, wallets, and credentials relative to each other. We also did some work on endpoints and the group's currently in hibernation because we're done work for now, but I think we'll come back when yeah. the time is right to do this type of um, convergence around language and, and usage. Great. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's the main, uh, the bulk of the tour uh, here on the about page of the diff website you can find uh, links to the governing um, documents like the charter the code of conduct um, which governs sort of uh, procedures for the working groups calls mailing lists to make sure everyone feels um, enabled and empowered to contribute productively to the group and actively included. Um, so if if anything, if anything, even this video uh, makes you uncomfortable or uh, you're curious about the code of conduct, um, it's worth a read. And it's an ongoing process. If you have um, improvements, uh, you can issue a pull request on it as you can on most GitHub resources on the diff website. It's a very GitHub centric community. So um, you, you are not just agreeing to the code of conduct when you participate in a working group, you're also agreeing to make it better <laughs> if pull requests uh, jump out at you. And um, steering committee minutes also here. So um, those, that's a sort of, overview of your op options on the terminology and the structure of the organization. The um, fundamental question we recommend new members think about is for each of these, what is the commitment, uh, implicit or explicit, of joining a working group at, or working on a work item? And what's your goal? What, what are you trying to get out of uh, it? So. A lot of people feel a little shy coming in. They see, they get on the Slack, they see some heated technical debates, they go on GitHub, they see daily activity, pushes and pulls flying by, 
they don't know where to jump in. But um, definitely the lowest commitment place to start is scrolling up in Slack, looking back a few weeks of discussion, listening in, uh, listening to some recordings, whether in forward or backwards chronological order. If you know one of the working groups is working on some items relevant to your research or your development, uh, the, the lowest commitment is just to uh, lurk, as we call it, uh, just sort of passively take it all in. Uh, but we also recommend within your first few months, definitely just, just taking that leap and going a step further and attending the calls speaking on the calls, introducing yourself. Uh, Kalia, do you have any, any guidance on how to make that first step? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, another option too, if you're um, feeling a little bit shy is to reach out to the chairs and talk about what you do and how you think what you might have could be relevant. And they'll, they are the ones who are holding a space for the whole group and can help you understand more about the roadmap for the group and whether what you have to contribute fits in on that roadmap sooner rather than later, right? So yeah. you don't have to like that. The community is very friendly and welcoming and people don't like taking the time to help newcomers who have um, things to contribute, figure out how best to do that. Yeah, and, and there's many ways to contribute uh, and there's no rule against very actively lurking. There's no rule against signing up for every mailing list, listening to every recording, never showing up to a live meeting. That's fine. Um, and there's uh, also no a very low barrier for entry for being a productive participant in technical discussions. I mean, lots of people attend every week working groups that don't have a technical background just because they know the use case, just because they have history there just because they have a lot of other ways to contribute. Um, so never feel like working groups are only for CTOs. That is not the culture of DIFF. And I'm, this is my hill to die on. I will leave angry if that ever becomes the culture of DIFF. Yes, yes. Um, and definitely the product owners working group, the special interest groups that are growing in number over the next few months are a great place to talk about adoption, uh, industry specific pilots and regulatory issues that are, are making the market, sort of building the, you know, you can do recon on the market with other companies. Um, yes, and so I think one of the things that's also important to remember is that this organization is underneath two other organizations, the Joint Development Foundation, which was merged into the Linux Foundation. And there are antitrust provisions for being a part of this community. So you can't talk about products and pricing, but you can talk about everything else. <laughs> um, Important antitrust consideration. No price fixing at DIFF, please. <laughs> no, yes, we will. Yes, yeah, so. You, you know. can talk to other bakers, but not about the price of the bread. <laughs> You can, yes, just how we're going to make really yummy bread that everyone can enjoy <laughs> and sell at whatever price they feel like. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the most important thing uh, is finding a place in any of the structure that is useful to you and feeling like it is yours. If you are a member, you can come into Slack channels and start demanding things. Demanding answers, demanding explanations, <laughs> within asking, reason, within the code of conduct. really nicely for more information, <laughs> more like it's one. Um, we, we have a code of conduct, but you know, uh, d don't be shy. Don't be, uh, don't, don't feel like this isn't your venue. Yeah. Um, 